Lamlash is an idyllic coastal town on the Isle of Arran with pristine views out into the Firth of Clyde. These waters were once one of Europe's most commercially productive fishing areas and Lamlash held international sea angling festivals, celebrating thriving populations of whitefish, including herring, cod and haddock. But in the 1980s, the tide turned. I remember fishing in 1986 and we catch so many fish that we wouldn't know what to do with. But uh, the year after that, you went out and caught nothing. A change in the law allowed bottom dredging close to the UK coast, coinciding with the introduction of a new, destructive type of scallop dredger. There were factory boats coming in and hoovering everything out the, the seabed. It was horrible. It was a fishing revolution that eventually saw the Clyde labelled as a marine desert by scientists. Fish stocks fell by a devastating 96%. But the passion of two local divers who couldn't bear to watch an entire ecosystem disappear saw the creation of Coast, the Community of Arran Seabed Trust. Local diver Howard Wood was one of those determined to make a change. When did you first dive these waters, Howard? Uh, 1974. And if I would have come with you on that first dive, what would I have seen? Dozens of uh, flatfish, plaice, dabs, even big turbot. Thornback rays, cuckoo rays, shoals of saith and pollock. I only really appreciated what I'd seen as a teenager, maybe 10, 15 years later, when it was starting to disappear. But you weren't happy to just sit back and watch all this happen. You, you actually took action, didn't you? My friend, Don McNeish, I mean, he, he kept poking me, saying, we need to do something. Um, Don had come back from New Zealand with the idea of a no-take zone, which is a, an area that no marine life or plants can be taken out of. And it, we tried to do something. As two or three people, nobody really took much notice. And so we realised that we really needed the community on board. They say that when you try and establish any kind of marine protection area, the people to persuade are the local fishermen. How did they react? And we knew them, and we knew them very well, and some of them were our friends. So it wasn't that difficult to actually convince the local fishermen. But even with the local fishermen on board, it took a further 13 years of lobbying, letters and phone calls to persuade those in power. In 2008, the first ever no-take zone in Scottish waters was established around Lamlash Bay. We were ecstatic, it was absolutely great, we held a small celebration. You know, we've campaigned for 13 years to get this no-take zone, but in reality, this is the start. It, it's like a living laboratory. What happens when you leave the sea to just naturally change, do what it wants to do? Now, it's been 10 years since the no-take zone was granted, so I suppose the big question is, has it worked? Dr. Bryce Stewart from the University of York has been carrying out research and surveys in this protected area for the past 10 years, documenting its recovery. Are you seeing a lot more marine life in the no-take zones now compared to the areas immediately around them? We're seeing much higher biodiversity overall in the no-take zone. It's about 50% higher. And also for some particular species, like lobsters, there's more than double the number in the no-take zone, and scallops as well. And both the scallops and lobsters are much bigger as well, which is really important. So this must have a, a, a knock-on effect for the fishermen. Yeah, that's what we think is going on, particularly for those, those key species, lobsters and scallops. Because they're much bigger, the females are producing lots of eggs, and those eggs are hatching, the larvae are spreading out in the currents and, and reseeding the fishing grounds. So by protecting just these small areas, you can actually have a big benefit. And for Howard, the benefit includes seeing more on his dives once again. It's absolutely fantastic to go down for a dive and what we're going to see this year, what's going to have changed this year. It's only 2.67 square kilometres, but it has numerous different types of habitats. So it's great seeing things sprout up. This spring we've seen a real good range of different types of nudibranchs, which divers get very excited about because of all the colour. Last Monday, 
I had a great experience with a pleuroblanctus, which is also commonly known as the Highland Dancer, and some fantastic octopus in amongst the bright pink live mill. It's such a joy to see 